back with more Ends of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is episode 5 of season 7. Very excited as always to get back into this uh, season, see what's going to happen next, because my god, season 7 has been awesome so far. I loved the kind of noir episode last week. Um, Sousa's now with the team, they're in a new time period, I think we're in the 70s, which is going to be cool, uh, so I can't wait for all the new... Uh, looks that everyone's going to be showing off and getting used to this new time period. What on earth are the Chronicoms up to? Where is our dear Lord and Saviour Fitz? Um, this is like... Going into this one, this is like the first episode where I've been like, we're not going to get any Fitz. Like, even like a mention or anything. I just felt like we're not going to see him. I've always had that tiny bit of hope for like the previous few episodes. That maybe we'll get like a brief cameo or something or hear his voice or something. This time I'm like, I'm not feeling it. I don't think it's the time. I think it's going to be quite near the end of the season. But I'd happily be wrong and he's in like 20 minutes <laughs> worth of screen time in this one. That'd be great. But we'll see. Either way, uh, really, really excited to see us continue with this season. Um, still lots of interesting things to explore with like May being an empath. Um, just kind of an interesting kind of connection to the um, events in Bahrain from her past with the little girl there uh, you know what's happened with Gemma and you know the we had time what went on there how long has it really been is there still that whole kind of mystery uh, why can't Yo-Yo use her powers there's still a lot of stuff kind of going on and I'm very excited to see this storyline continue to unfold so without further ado let's get into the next one I've seen this intro <laughs> I love it. Might as well dive in and embrace the 1970s. Yeah. Starting now. <laughs> I heard Dooley had a reserve booth with one of those black things. Oh, Dooley. Hey, Dad, let's not keep Enoch waiting any longer. He's been chilling for like four decades. Did she just call him Dad? They're so good at like establishing the atmosphere for all the different time periods, like so quickly. Mm hmm. Did you hear anything from Bobo? Bobo. For Grandpappy, whatever you want to call him. Oh, Fitz, no, I haven't heard. But um, even if I had, I couldn't disclose. Them. Right, because the Chronicons will probe our brains and blah blah blah. Why didn't she know Bobo? Because if you and Fitz don't bump lemons, <laughs> so to speak, I would like to see it. The fuck is that? With or without your powers, they won't define you. Then why do you call me Yo Yo? Because you always bounce back. Aww. Awesome. Gotta give credit to Ming for like being able to channel loads of different emotions so quickly. But that's tough. <laughs> hey! Yes! Oh, bloody hell. I'm not applauding. Shield will now be able to neutralize hostiles anywhere in the world before they pose a threat. Sound familiar to you? Yeah. When the soldier. Sounds like Hydra's forty years ahead of schedule. Yeah. I present to you Project Insight. Yeah. Shit. The Chronicoms have like steamrolled it. Sure. Or is that just a trout in the milk? Trout in the milk. Ha ha. Let's make the rounds, get some intel on Project Insight, keep an eye out for Enoch. Get some insight on Project Insight. Oh, but as a commanding officer, purchasing you an alcoholic beverage would be a violation of your drug <laughs> guidelines, however. Agent Chastity McBride, Deputy HR Liaison, wow. and I find you That's professional <laughs> the best name. Chastity McBride. Spin off! If Nathaniel had his way, he'd be at home listening to the carpenters on his hi fi. Nathaniel? So that must make you Gideon. Gideon. Oh. Guilty as charged. Oh man. Ha ha ha. I kill you. Honey, I think we need to go. Oh, 
Excuse us. Caesar's a very quick thinker. I don't like this. So Daisy was right, they should have taken him out. It's not your fault. The guy's had three extra years. Who knows what else he's gotten into? Mm. Oh, this looks different. Maybe he just collects coins or something. Mm. An underground base full of men in jumpsuits. Always a bad deal. <laughs> Oh. Big ass rocket. Yes, Hacker Daisy. Who's Banner? Never heard of him. That's because he's just a kid now, but in a few decades he becomes an Avenger. Damn. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> a good thing. What's your name again? Jeff? Patrick Cooper. Ha. <laughs> me. Where did you come from? Nice. Not processing. You. What you gonna do when they come for you? Yes. Uh. <laughs> oh, you know we don't deserve you. Oh. What have you been doing? You've tried that and you were shit. We're about to jump. Tell me you can override it. I'm trying to something to mess with the algorithm. How is that possible? Chronicles? Yeah. The jumping alley. So they've skipped to the launch day. I mean it looks cool. Don't get me wrong. You are forgetting. What? What? Is that like making her forget? Is it like a forgetting thing? I'm sorry. So you're screwing with time, but you have no idea what you're doing. Hey, back off. She's trying. That's not good enough. You're playing with the matches. Aw. Leave her alone. Yes. Lives are at stake. I know, Daniel, but... Sh now, we all work. We all work. Listen up. I love Deke so much. Oh, I'm defending his nana. Just bring him in, the clock's ticking. Oh boy. Oh, oh. Last time you, you and Deke, they I'm said you'd be back today. they'd um, take things into their own hands. Sybil, our predictor, has seen that shield will find you here, and when they do, you will have leverage. Well, she needs to see a hairdresser, first of all. You're my firewall. But only old people use it for calls. How did you do that? <laughs> Check it out. Looks like you missed the line. Who needs technology? I wish I could have said some goodbyes. Hmm. Taking these throwback uniforms. <laughs> My god, they like the Fantastic Four. We were good ages together, regardless of what we became later. Just wondering if it'll ever feel that way again. I'm wondering if I'm ever going to feel anything again. Yeah. Oh! Oh, Jesus. Yeah. They told me if someone poked around in the system, it would be you. You little shit. Nathaniel. Oh. This could take some doing. Exactly. That's why we need you to suspend the launch protocol and then we can. Just to be what it is. Oh. Hey. I was getting through to him. Well. He felt otherwise. <laughs> Thunderbirds are go. They were always ten steps ahead. Ah. They see what you're going to do, and they know exactly. <gasps> they 
They see that coming? Oh, fuck. What did you just do? He's supposed to be dead, right? Status quo. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, what is it? Ah, I forgot how stressful this show makes me. Ah. Are those prisoners? My parents. Oh, oh no! Of course they may flood the base. No drama. You can't make him do that. Oh my, you chronicoms. What does that mean, though? Ah! Matt, are you saying that? Saying arm the damn missiles. Are we taking it down the old-fashioned way? It is interesting they put him in that position. It's a whole Daisy Deke Malik thing early in the season, and then when it's his own parents, you're like. Nah. There's your fireworks, chronicoms. Missiles detonated on impact. Insight has been destroyed. But we just gave up our position. True. Hmm. Uh -huh. Turn in a moment. Daniel Whitehall. Daniel. So block D. Oh God. No. Yes. So budget, yes. Evan Peters. Oh, God. Well, um, <laughs> that was stressful. Good old S.H.I.E.L.D. stress. Um, I think that episode took a couple of years off my life, because I was just freaking out about everyone and everything. Uh, particularly that last, like, ten minutes, they really... Oh, boy. Um, great, great episode. Um, as to be um, accepted, <laughs> I've turned to Sean Connery, as to be expected, uh, because it's S.H.I.E.L.D. But, my goodness, um... There's a lot to unpack there, I feel like. I like how they kind of continue to explore the Chronicoms being like 10 steps ahead. and It had gotten to a point when I was kind of like, they are a bit shit with their plans and they always just get so easily kind of um, defeated and um, they're like, oh well, I guess we're going to have to jump again because we failed. Um, so that was kind of like, uh, you're not really great, are you, as like threats. But... This episode, with that ending, I feel like there's a bit more going on there. The fact that they've kind of manipulated things and spearheaded like Project Insight and moved that forward by decades. Uh, I really like that kind of idea. I thought that was really cool to kind of bring that into things. Um, so yeah, that was a really unique kind of twist on the tale, I suppose. Um, having like a big Hydra plot brought forward. I really like that idea. Uh, you just kind of mess with your head like, oh god, how does this work with the timeline and everything? But if they could just continue to keep this under wraps, you know, they can still have the idea for Project Insight in like 30 years or whatever, can't they? Um, and, you know, uh, Malik was supposed to be um, dead at this point anyway, Freddie Malik. Um, so Deke shooting him and killing him there. You know what? He did what Daisy asked of him. <laughs> just a couple of episodes later, and a couple of decades later, you know? He did shoot him. She didn't specify when to take the shot. So, Deke did what Daisy asked, there you go. Um, but yeah, that's kind of insane. As soon as Yo-Yo and Deke were paired together again, going after Malik, I was like, oh my god, they're gonna do something here. Um, Cause, you know, the last episode they were talking about, um, if they have the chance to kind of change history again, they take it, uh, and they had that chance, and Deke killed him, so that's kind of huge that he took that initiative. Um, and I don't think it has, is as quite as explosive for the timeline as it would have been if he did it in episode 2, because obviously Malik was supposed to be dead at this point anyway, and the Chronicles have kept him alive. Cool kind of idea, and we're getting a lot of like focus on the Malik family this season, which I wasn't expecting, but I'm kind of intrigued to see what they can continue to do. Obviously Gideon's still going to have a bit more of a role, because he's kidnapped Daisy and Sousa, which isn't great. And he's getting Daniel Whitehall involved. I wonder if we'll see him again. 
Um, because it wasn't his thing that, um, can't quite remember now. It wasn't Dino Whitehall's kind of thing that he didn't really age. I feel like he looked the same for years and years, so they could easily just get the actor in. Um, so they could do that, but even, even so, they've got quite a few shout-outs to characters in this one, which I quite enjoyed. Um, and they've got mentions of Bruce Banner and all sorts, and, um, the captain from Agent Carter got a shout-out, Dooley, quite early on. Um, so yeah, that was cool. I enjoyed seeing Deke kind of take that initiative, wanting to go on that mission in the first place. Uh, Deke was great in this episode, um, but I've always kind of loved Deke since midway through season five, really, so that's not really news for people who've been watching my reactions since about that point. Um, and him standing up for his nana. <laughs> I mean, I get Suze is kind of like, oh my god, I'm out of time, this is bizarre, what are you doing, you're messing things up even further, you know. But he only really got angry at Gemma about it, and I think that was, I was like, come on, come on, come on. And then Deke was like, bitch, please, you do not talk to my nana like that. And I love it. I love that he just stood up for her like that. And it was nice to get some Gemma and Deke interaction in this episode. Um, I think it was the one thing I was really craving, apart from Fitz, uh, this season was more Gemma and Deke stuff. So it's cool we got a bit. I'd love to see even more. I'm very nervous about the whole Gemma situation. Uh of the whole thing in the back of her neck and she's forgetting things. Um, I'm scared this is going to kickstart the LMD Gemma theory again, even though it can't be, because she... Maybe when she activated that EMP in episode 3, it didn't knock her out, so she can't be like an LMD, because Carlson got knocked out. Maybe that disrupted whatever that is in the back of her neck, and now she's starting to forget things or something. I feel like it could be a device where... If she happens to learn something about Fitz, or she like decodes a message from Fitz or something, so she can get that, but maybe that allows her to forget it straight away, maybe? So she has kind of decoded things or whatever, she doesn't know where Fitz is. As a failsafe, you know, if she accidentally learns something she shouldn't, that can like delete it. Because Enoch seemed to be very aware of what was going on with her. He tried to rush her off to do something uh, before they got interrupted. So Enoch clearly knows a lot more about it. And we had him in, when May first woke up at the start of the season. She was asking him stuff, and he was like, I'm not allowed to divulge that information. Um, so maybe it's a similar kind of situation here. He's kind of monitoring that, and in the absence of Enoch, maybe it's malfunctioned or something. Um, you know, make get a reading off her as well, so... She's not an LMD. She can't be. It's just, no. So I feel like maybe it's like a memory thing. It's a failsafe to um, prevent her accidentally learning things about Fitz, and if she does, she can forget it. I don't know. It could kind of make sense, but again, that's the mystery of it. We don't really know yet, and I'm sure we'll get an episode really explaining exactly how that's all gone down very, very soon, which I'm excited for. Um, but yeah, very concerned, because Gemma doesn't deserve to suffer. <laughs> and yet, she's really having a hard time with things at the minute. You know, she, was, like, without, she was slipping without Enoch and that whole thing. It was only really this episode she started doing that. So, it must be like a recent malfunction, or, I don't know. I'm very intrigued by that, though, and see where they're going to go with it, because we must protect Gemma at all costs, and the closer we get to fi figuring out what's going on with that, and exactly why Gemma has that and everything, um, it means we're going to learn more about the time period between, well, it was during the season six finale, really, when she and Fitz had time. It's, we're closer to learning more about that. So that's going to be really exciting, because I can't wait to learn a bit more about that. Um, so intrigued with all of that. Um, it's cool to see Rick Stoner again. I love Patrick Warburton, so that was really cool. He had a few really funny moments. I liked the dynamic between him and May in particular, and May continuing to read all these different emotions and balancing them all out. Uh, I think, you know, Ming's doing a fantastic job with that. I can't imagine it's easy to try and echo all these different emotions just in, like, as you, like, walk across a room, you have to feel so many different things. So I think she's really rising to the challenge of that. Um, and we'll see what further they can, like, more they can explore with May as an empath. I'm sure it's going to lead to something quite big, so I'm excited about that. Um, and we've got a lot of dynamic with her and Colson as well. Uh, they had a few funny moments, and Colson is still trying to form that connection with her again, but whether or not, even if she wasn't an empath, she'd want to form that connection anyway, because obviously it's not like her, Colson. Um, we don't know, but the fact that she is an empath, she can't really feel and connect to him anyway. That's kind of interesting, and I love that the one who literally is like a robot is the one 
trying to make those like human connections and those emotional connections and the one who actually is human can't feel it at the minute. That's kind of interesting. I like that kind of dynamic and that parallel and it will continue to cause pain, I imagine, for, for Linda fans uh, like myself. So that was all interesting. And yeah, Sousa being a man out of time again. I like how Deke was trying to win his little argument with him about saying he was in a similar kind of boat. Um, but you can kind of understand Sousa's frustrations with things and it's just, it's a lot for him to take in, I get that. His reaction to the cell phone was hilarious. Um, I really like the scenes with him and Colson. They seem to get on quite well. Um, I think there's a real mutual respect there. Um, I think with Colson, you know, Sousa's history and everything, he grew up kind of learning about Sousa, so he has that respect for him anyway. And I think Sousa just gets the sense that Colson is someone to be respected. So that's really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next with him. He's still struggling with things. He's like, oh, this should be my last stop. I don't think he's going to be sticking around for the entire rest of the season. I don't think that's where they're going with it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of exciting to see a bit more of him and to see where that could go. And yeah, Daisy got a bit kidnapped as well with Gideon. Interesting seeing a young Gideon. Um, a bit freaky. So I don't know where they're going with the whole kidnap plot and what Gideon has in store for those two, but that'll probably be a big thing in the next episode. Maybe Daisy can go just quake him or whatever. I don't. Hopefully he doesn't know that she has powers. So that'd be fun. Um, cause Susan's reactions to Daisy's powers were also great. That was really funny. Um, Mac and Yo-Yo had some really, really nice scenes. I loved when they first went back to the lighthouse, which was really cool to see that place again. He was kind of telling her, um, you know, you're a great agent with or without your powers. They don't define you. You always bounce back. I thought it was a really, really sweet moment. Love that. I love those two um, together so, so much. Uh, and Mac's parents. I don't blame him at all for making the call he did, even though it would have been like the easy, that was their plan, the solution, to kind of stop Project Insight without giving away their location, um, flooding the base, but he didn't want to kill his parents, which is kind of fair. I don't know if I could do that if I was in his shoes. I don't know if I could make that call. Um, even if it is like needs of the many, that way needs of the few, whatever, but it's your parents, you know. Um, I don't know if it's like the parents that were in that folder that Malik had as well, that Yo-Yo opened. Um, seemed to be a photo of people there, and based on Yo's reaction, she must know who they are. Um, I feel like Mac would have shown her maybe a picture of his parents, when they're like looking at pictures of Hope or whatever, maybe. Um, so maybe she recognises them, I don't know. But bringing Max's parents into it, very interesting. Looking forward to that. Because that obviously means we're going to get some really cool material with Mac, I think, in probably the next episode. That will be the immediate impact of that. But getting to know Max's parents would be really, really cool. I'd love to see that. Um, I've always been keen to be like, oh, let's meet Gemma's parents. Let's meet, let's meet uh, Fitz's parents. Let's meet Colson's parents. Um, we've seen May's parents, well, her mum, at least, very briefly. Actually, I think her dad's been in it as well, hasn't he? I think. Maybe it was her grandfather. Can't quite remember. Um, and of course, we had a whole season exploring like Daisy's parents and stuff. So the fact that we're getting Max's parents would be really interesting, and I think that can provide some really cool stuff for him as a character as well, and good character stuff for him. Uh, so I really enjoyed Max's arc in season six as well. It's one of my favourite things about season six was Max's kind of character arc, um, trying to be like a new leader and stuff. So yeah, um, if we get more material for him, it's always going to be a good thing. Uh, Enoch reunited with the team is great and I think he could be a key to answering a lot of questions about what happened with Gemma and everything with the thing on her neck but again he's an icon he has some great lines I'm glad that he's not abandoned anymore and he's back with the team hopefully full time now uh, hopefully they don't abandon him again but yeah that was really cool to see him because Enoch is an icon so yeah lots of uh really really cool stuff going on in this episode and I can't wait to see them explore it further particularly the thing with um, the aftermath of maybe Deke killing Malik um, Shield's location being exposed when they had to blow up the rocket which was really cool um, Max's parents I think is going to be a big deal as well but I loved the kind of um, Coulson and Sousa dynamic, the Daisy and Sousa dynamic Coulson and May the pairing of them was cool um, Chronicoms kind of being 10 steps ahead. It's nice that they do have some moments when they're really capable villains. Uh, seeing Rick Stoner again was great. So yeah, really, really good stuff for this episode. And how many episodes do we have left? Eight? 
eight episodes left of Shield, then that's it. That's that's sad. But once again, we've had five amazing episodes so far. I'm sure that will continue. Looking forward to seeing what else is going to happen. Um, are they going to have to time jump again the next one already? Um, because we already had a, a brief one in this episode. Who knows? But this was a stressful episode. I feel like this is classic S.H.I.E.L.D. getting stressed about every single character ever. Um, and you know, we're approaching the halfway point of the season now, so it makes sense things are really going to escalate further. And yeah, awesome episode. Really, really loved it. And I can't wait to see what's going to be happening with uh, episode 6. So yeah. Oh boy, uh, season seven, you're killing it. I think this could easily be one of my favourite seasons of the show if it keeps this up, because my god, uh, firing on all cylinders for their final run um, and having a lot of fun with it. You know, they're still doing experimental stuff. I love the opening title sequence, that was really funny. Um, and yeah, again, continuing to establish really cool kind of time periods and getting it across with like the setting and the, the wardrobe choices and the music and everything. A great at establishing like these new eras um, whenever they time travel. It's one a thing I'm really appreciating this season again is the production. Um, they really do kill it. This show is just amazing. So yeah, fantastic episode, fantastic season so far. Can't wait to see what else they have in store for us with the next eight episodes. And until my next reaction, thanks for watching.